Hey, hey, everybody. It's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Have you ever heard of the saying that missing the forest for the trees? That's when you pay attention to small details and you lose the big picture. And maybe with the recent announcement of SBI and their postponement of the live board trading for the SBI VC virtual currency site, I uh, probably got a little focused. And so I will just share with you a little bit of speculation and chatter that's coming from this particular story, as well as bringing you two new stories that are reaching outside into the big picture but they do have a potential impact on XRP and Ripple. So first, when we take a look at this postponement, we can see here that the chatter is that possibly R3 has a role. Now, this is just speculation, but people are talking about that R3 will provide that enhanced security that Mr. Kitao is searching for. And they can do this with an on-premise cloud deployment where it runs in the environment of that client. So it makes sense to me that they will be utilized, especially since January 30th. We know that SBI created that new joint venture. It's called the SBI R3 Japan joint venture. Uh, SBI has a 60% stake and R3 has a 40% stake. I will keep paying attention to this, but it is possible that they will provide that enhanced security. And then when we look at security, the intrusions into web connected devices has nearly doubled here in Japan. Uh, for the year 2018. Cryptocurrency networks in Japan are being compromised at an alarming rate, according to the National Police Agency, which gave this statement on March 7th. So these web-connected device attacks have doubled in 2018 with an average of 2,752 intrusions per sensor per day. That was up 45% from the previous year. So this is a real growing concern. And a lot of that is coming from North Korea. When we look at the Nikkei Asian Review article, which just came out a couple of days ago, we can see that the attacks uh, in the cyber um, sphere from North Korea is spreading around the world. And here is a graph that shows us their failure rate and their success rate from 2015 to 2018. Back in 2016, the Bangladesh Central Bank was hit for $81 million. In 2018, the virtual currency exchange operators in the Asian countries was a victim of $571 million in stolen virtual currency and funds. And then you have just recently the Bank of Chile being compromised with 10 million and India's Cosmos Bank lost 13.5 million. And look at the number of attacks that, yes, however, failed, but a thousand of them. Financial institutions in North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and South America all becoming uh, potential victims of North Korea, trying to circumvent the sanctions that they are I'm suffering right now, and they are really doing uh, these attacks at all cost to obtain foreign currency. So this is probably a problem that is going to get worse, not better. All right, now getting out of the uh, story from SBI, there are two stories when I dug deep that are happening here, which could have some potential impact on XRP and Ripple. And the first one is five banks in Japan are going to release this new blockchain financial solutions platform called Fitting Hub. And it was also made possible by an investment from an IBM um, arm called AIT. AIT 
is a joint venture with IBM Japan. They are a financial services platform that utilize the blockchain. They formed this company, Fitting Hub, on, Fe on February 12, 2019. And they provide this cloud solution for Aomori Bank, Bank of Akita, Iwate Bank, Yamanashi Bank, and NEC. If we look at the actual website of Fitting Hub, you can see that the new business model in the area with settlement and digital power is their focus. And when we have a look at their timeline here for their historical timeline, you can see that they started this consortium back in July 2017 and started the construction of the platform in January 2018. They did their trial operation in November of 2018, and they established the joint uh, venture with that um, AIT, IBM company in February 2019, and they launched March 2019. So I will keep paying attention to this, but this is obviously a developing story. And speaking of IBM, this story has me at the edge of my chair. So Jesse Lund, he's the IBM VP for Blockchain Solutions, has hinted that the international tech company is set to announce a new product which could allow payments from anywhere in the world to anywhere in the world. It's supposed to be as simple as sending an email. And he mentioned that he'll be keynoting a major event in Singapore with his friend, Stellar founder, Jed McCaleb, and they'll be talking about a special announcement of this new product. Well, when we go to the Money 2020 Asia website, it ha it's a big deal. This is uh, six stages. It goes on from March 19, 20th to the 21st. It is in Singapore, as I said, and the 40, 40 featured speakers of hundreds that will actually be speaking. The very first one shown is Jed, Jed McCaleb. So quite interesting. Uh, Ashish Birla, from Ripple will be speaking along with Eric Van Miltenberg. He is the Senior Vice President of Global Operations in Ripple. There are so many companies. It's like a who's who, some 500 of the biggest companies like R3, Wirex, Swift, JP Morgan, SBI will be there, Ant Financial, Goldman, Apple, Tencent, Twitter, Standard Chartered, the list is uh longer than one's arm. So mark your calendars because we are probably going to see a lot of earth shaking news come out of this whole event. It's going to be big. And if we drill down a little further, you can see that their talk is going to be what at uh, on Tuesday of that date. I think it's at, um, wow, I can't remember the time like 9.40, oh, it's at, from 9.40 in the morning till 10 a.m. Is that all? It seems so short, right? Well, it'll be on March 19th, but here it says that the um, Jesse Lund from IBM will share his vision on how digital currency and other digital assets will transform the payments value chain. IBM will also be making an exclusive product announcement. Together, this pioneering duo have grand plans for disrupting and transforming payments and ambitions to establish a truly global footprint in cross-border payments. So I am quite interested in their announcement. Okay, so everybody, I'm going to the fluff, and the fluff is for some of you who are new to this channel, I talk about something at the end of the video to round it out, but it usually ties in some way, somehow to the topics of the day. And in this day, I'm going to talk about the all-female divers in Japan called Amasan. And in the U.S., we talk about going down a rabbit hole when we do our research. And I go down the rabbit holes all the day. But these women, 
go down deep into the ocean as free divers, and they have done so for nearly 3,000 years. Sometimes they collect seaweed, sometimes shellfish like abalone and clams or uni, and there are approximately a thousand active divers left in Japan. Each dive is about one minute long, but in a day's work, they'll go down 50 to 100 times in that day. And traditionally, and still today, it is a woman's profession. In the month of May to October, for approximately $200, you can dive with the ama. And the amasan are just a treasure here. You can go down for about 45 minutes with them and at the end you can barbecue what you have found and what an amazing experience that would be. So I think if you do come to Japan don't miss diving with Ama in the Ise Shima area of Mie Prefecture. They are trying to get the World Heritage UNESCO recognition before the G7 summit here in Japan. I don't know if they can do it, but I hope so. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you today. Do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.